Good day everyone! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss another lesson in life and works of Jose Rizal. But before we proceed to our formal discussion, I just want to share one of my favorite quotes about Jose Rizal. And this is the quote, I have to believe much in God because I have lost my faith in man. Last time, we discussed about Rizal in the context of 19th century Philippines, wherein there were huge changes in economic, political, cultural, and religious aspect. Today's lesson, we will discuss about Rizal's life, including his family, his childhood, and his early education. In this lesson, we will be able to know better our national hero. It is very important for us to familiarize ourselves about his origin, not only because he is our national hero, but also because in, uh, it will help us to understand how did he come up with those actions, which is uh, being nationalistic. We will be dealing with the following subtopics. Number one, his birth. Number two, his family ancestry. Number three, his hometown. And number four, the story of the moth. Let's begin by discussing his birth. Jose Rizal was baptized on June 22, 1861 by Father Rufino Colantes, and one of his godfathers is Father Pedro Casanas. Father Colantes told everyone that uh, we, they need to take good care of this child for someday he will become a great man, and he wasn't wrong about that. Jose Rizal was born on June 19, 1861 in Calamba, Laguna. And according to his memoir, quote and quote, I was born in Calamba on June 19, 1861 between 11 and midnight. A few days before full moon, it was Wednesday and my coming out in this veil of tears would have cost my mother her life. Had she not vowed to the Virgin of Antipolo to take me, to her sanctuary by way of pilgrimage. Now learners, let us familiarize ourselves about his parents. We have first Dr. Jose Rizal's father. His name is Francisco Mercado Rizal. He dis uh, Rizal described him as a model of fathers. He was born in Binyan Laguna on May 11, 1818. He got Latin and philosophy and graduated at Colegio de San Juan, Manila. He was a tenant farmer of a Dominican-owned hacienda in Calamba and died in Manila on January 5, 1898. Rizal, or Jose Rizal, described his father as hardy, independent-minded, strong in body, and valiant in spirit. He is a person who talks less, however, he works more. And that's why Rizal, Jose Rizal really admired his father's characteristics and beliefs. Now, it's our turn to familiarize ourselves about his mother, which is Theodora Alonso Rialonda. Jose Rizal described his mother as a woman more than ordinary culture because Theodora Alonso was a remarkable woman possessing refined literary talents, business ability, and fortitude of Spartan women. She knows a lot in terms of literature and she also speaks Spanish fluently wherein there were times that she corrected Rizal's written accounts such as poems or poem. She was born in Manila on November 8, 1826 and educated at Colegio de Santa Rosa. She died in Manila on August 16, 1911. Class, we're done already with 
the introduction of Jose Rizal's parents, Teodora Alonso Rialonda and Francisco Mercado Rizal. Now, it's our turn to understand and at the same time familiarize also ourselves about his siblings. Now, let's have the first one, the oldest of Rizal's children, named Neneng. Saturnina Rizal, born in 1850 and died in 1913. She married Manuel T. Hidalgo of Tanawan, Batangas. Again, she is Saturnina Rizal Hidalgo. The second, we have Pashana Rizal, older brother and confident of Jose Rizal. After his younger brother's execution, he joined the Philippine Revolution and became a combat general after the revolution. He retired to his farm in Los Baños, where he lived as a gentleman or a gentleman farmer and died on April 13, 1930. An old bachelor, aged 79, he had two children by his mistress, Severina de Sena, a boy, one boy, and one girl. Again, the oldest brother, Pasiano Rizal, born in 1851 and died in 1930. Third, we have Olympia Rizal Ubaldo, otherwise known as Ipia. She was born in 1855 and died in 1887. She married Silvestre Ubaldo, a telegraph operator from Manila. Fourth, we have Narcisa Rizal Lopez, otherwise known as Sisa. She was born in 1852 and died in 1939. Narcisa married Antonio Lopez, a school teacher of Morong. Bataan. Fifth, we have Lucia Rizal Herbosa. She was born in 1857 and died in 1919. She married Mariano Herbosa of Calamba, who was a nephew of Father Casanas. When Herbosa died of cholera in 1889, he was denied. He was denied about the Christian burial because he was a brother-in-law of Doctor Jose Rizal. Sixth, we have Maria Rizal Cruz, otherwise known as Biang. She was born in 1859 and died in 1945. She married Daniel Faustino Cruz of Binyan, Laguna. Seventh, we have Jose Rizal, otherwise known as Pepe. He is the greatest Filipino hero and peerless genius. Uh, during his exile in the Pitan, he lived with Josephine Bracken, an Irish girl from Hong Kong, wherein he had son by her, but this baby boy died a few hours after birth. Rizal named him Francisco after his father's name and buried him in the Pitan. Dr. Jose Rizal was born in 1861 and died in 1896. Eight, we have Concepcion Rizal, otherwise known as Concha. She was born in 1862 and died in 1865. Actually, she died of sickness at the age of three and her death was Rizal's first sorrow in life. Ninth, we have Josefa Rizal, otherwise known as Pangoy. She was born in 1865 and died an old maid at the age of 80 in 1945. Tenth, we have Trinidad Rizal, Trining. She was born in 1868 and died also an old maid in 1951 at the age of 83. And the youngest of the Rizal children, we have Soledad Rizal also known as Choleng. She was born in 1870. She married Pantaleon Quintero of Calamba and died in 1929. Jose Rizal's hometown is Calamba, Laguna. It is a hacienda town belongs to the Dominican order, described as a picturesque nestling on a verdant plain covered with irrigated rice fields and sugarlands. The turn points in Kalamba are the following. We have the Mount Makiling to Batangas. In the east, we have Laguna de Bay to Talim Island. 
in north we have Antipolo. In 1876, Rizal wrote Un Cuerdo or Un Recuerdo a Mi Pueblo. He was 15 years old that time. Uh, this poem is all about his hometown, in memory of my town, or in memory of his town. Of all the stories told by Doña Tudora to her favorite son, young moth made the profoundest impression on him. Quote and quote in his memoir, All my attention was fixed on the face of the insect. I watched it with my whole soul. It had died a martyr to its illusions. See that you do not behave like the young moth. Don't be disobedient or you may get burnt as it did. The light seemed to me more beautiful. It had grown more dazzling and more attractive. I knew why the moths circled the flame. Now let's talk about his boyhood influences by having first his hereditary influence. As a typical Filipino, Jose Rizal was a product of the mixture of races. In his veins flowed blood of both East and West. However, predominantly he was a Malayan and was a magnificent specimen of Asian manhood. In Malayan, he was influenced about the love for the freedom, desire to travel, and indomitable courage. In Chinese, he got serious nature, frugality, patience, and love for children. In Spanish, he was influenced with the elegance of bearing, sensitivity to insult, gallantry to ladies. And he influenced or I mean, he got these characteristics about profound sense of self-respect, love for work, independent thinking to his father. And from his mother, he got religious nature, spirit of self-sacrifice, passion for arts and literature. In terms of environmental influence, in Kalamba, the Rizal family garden stimulated inborn characteristics and literary talents. He also had religious atmosphere of his home, fortified his religious nature. He got the love for freedom and justice from his older brother, which is Pasiano. Courtesy and kindness to women from his sisters, and the interest and in folklore and legends from his Aya or Yaya. Environmental influence. He got the artistic ability from his Tio Jose Alberto, his physical wellness through exercises, horse riding, walking, and wrestling from Tio Manuel. Reading of good books from his Tio Gregorio. Love for scholarship and intellectual honesty from Padre Leoncio Lopez, a parish priest. And as we all know, his sorrows are the following. The death of Concha in 1965 and imprisonment of his mother in 1871 up until 1874. That, that is the reason why he really strengthened his spirit to resist the blows of adversities. The Spanish abuses and cruelties awakened his spirit of patriotism. Brutal acts of the Guardia Civil and just torture of innocent Filipinos and etc. might as well the execution of Gomburza in 1872. Education in Calamba Rizal's first teacher is Doña Tudora, wherein Doña Tudora taught him about basic reading, writing, and of course, praying. Wherein in Kalamba, he also met 
Maestro Celestino, Maestro Lucas Padua, uh, those were his private tutors at that time. Leon Monroy was the one who taught Rizal Spanish and Latin, some basic Spanish and Latin words. Thanks for watching. See you in my next one. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more lessons to learn. Bye!